Welcome to the Vineyard Church Message of the Week. We hope you enjoy this message. For more information on this podcast or other resources, go to vineyardlive.us. To learn more about us, go to the vineyardchurch.us. Jesus is alive. Jesus is here. Jesus heals today. What about medical doctors? If Jesus conquered sickness, why are people still sick? How do I actually have faith for healing? Does Jesus still do miracles? What about my whole being? How do we actually heal others? Come, experience for yourself. Jesus heals today. That's good news, yeah. And welcome to the vineyard. Thanks for joining us this weekend. Now, isn't it good just to gather together in God's presence and with one another? It's so encouraging. I'm excited with this new message series, Jesus Heals Today. I have three instructions for you to kick it off. Number one, I want you to throw away all your medication. Number two, I want you to cancel all your health insurance. And number three, stop all doctor visits immediately. Why are you laughing? Because we're desperate, right? (laughs) We need healing. But interestingly, almost 40 years ago, when I first learned that Jesus heals today, those were the three instructions given to me. And yes, radical. I know I was crazy for a while. Uh, Stupid. (laughs) But you know, they ingrained in me the truth. I will never, ever, ever move off. And I am passionate about the truth that Jesus heals today. He healed me personally of impossible infertility, gave me five beautiful children. It was actually that message of God is a healing God that birthed this church. And we've never failed to proclaim Jesus heals today. But while I'm passionate, I'm also a pastor. I'm a shepherd. And I know all the confusion and the desperation and the questions. I've prayed with many of you and you haven't gotten healed. I've buried people way too soon. I still weep with some of you who are in chronic pain. I'm a pastor. I'm a shepherd. But I know the good shepherd. And I know Jesus heals today. And the message I want to share today is Jesus is the best doctor. So let's pray. Well, Father, we know your heart for us, and it is that we be whole and healthy, and you paid a tremendous price for that. And you also know the obstacles that stand in our way. And so I pray, by the power of your Spirit, you would bulldoze those obstacles. You would release fresh faith in our hearts. You would just saturate us with your love and revelation today that Jesus is the best doctor. And it's in his powerful name we pray and we preach. Amen. Amen. Well, last spring, I was at the University of Iowa Medical Center. It's a huge, huge complex in Iowa City, and I was there because my mother had cancer for or- had surgery for oral cancer. And while I was there, I was navigating the corridors. And it's just building after building and hallway after hallway and, uh, and construction all over the place. And I was like, wow, like millions of dollars are being spent because people want to get well. And then I just started you know, like, keying in to all the faces of people, like in the cafe or in the, the waiting rooms or hallways, you know, walking with their IVs. And I was just like, Thousands of hours are being spent. I mean, people are desperate to get well. And I was like, why? Like, why is that? It's like, well, duh. We are made in the image of God. That's God's desire. You see, God put in us a desire to be healthy and to be whole. He even put in us an immune system. To help make sure that happens. You know, you cut yourself, you bleed, it clots, right? 
and we don't know how many diseases we're fighting off all the time. No, God wants us well. We're made in his image. It's his desire. And I want to go on record as saying it's one of the cruelest theologies that says otherwise, and it's very, very prominent in the church. Oh, yeah. How often have you heard or maybe said yourself, oh, God gave me this cancer to teach me something. Or I haven't been healed yet of the diabetes. God is maturing me. Really? Well, if God is using sickness and disease to teach us and to mature us, I say stop getting medical help and learn our lesson. See, that's inconsistent. If we really believe God gives us sickness, and a lot of the church believes this, if we really believe it, why are we trying so hard to get well? No. God wants us well. We're made in his image. Well, back to uh, Iowa City. So I'm standing in one corridor, and I'm watching this huge, absolutely beautiful building that's being constructed, and suddenly I see... Uh, the, the sign that says what it is, and it's the Stead Family Children's Hospital Wing at the university. And I'm like, whoa. And then I just lose it. Like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Is there anything more traumatic than a sick child? I mean, I watched my two-year-old niece die of cancer. No, it, it ravages families. And I could just feel, just like, people are desperate and I heard the Holy Spirit say in that moment, Di, you need to tell them, Jesus is the best doctor. Jesus is the best doctor. Now, he's not the only doctor, and that's where confusion has come. That, that dualism, like, you can't go to doctors if you're going to trust Jesus, or if you're going to trust Jesus, or, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, I know Jesus heals, but they don't act like it. <laughs> No, Jesus is the best doctor. He's not the only doctor, but he is a faithful physician. And I have almost 40 years of experience of this. I'm not just parroting something I heard on a podcast, people. I've lived this. I've lived this with my own family. I've raised five children. Jesus is by far the best doctor. Oh, do you mean we never had any sickness or injury or disease in our home? Absolutely not. Four of my children have had surgeries. I've had surgery. My husband has had surgery. One of our sons battled cancer. Several daughters, infertility, miscarriages, painful injuries of all kind. And yet I'm here to say today, Jesus is the best doctor and Jesus heals today. I'm 100% yes. <laughs> now, I'm also very aware of how complex healing is in the 21st century. There's no question. And there's this whole interplay of four factors, and I label this the D factor, for lack of a better term. And these four factors, they're all intertwined as we look at healing in the 21st century. First of all, we have just disease, okay, which a new one is being discovered about every hour, many of them incurable. Number two, we have the devil, and then we have doctors, and I'm very thankful for doctors in the medical profession, absolutely. And then divine intervention. But over all these four, there looms a gigantic D that has to do with us. And that is the word decision. You see, that makes all the difference in the world. Based on what we believe, we make a decision to act or to do. And so what we believe about all four of these factors and even how they interplay make a huge difference in our experience of Jesus' healing or even Jesus as the best doctor. What do I mean? Let's take, for example, disease. You know, if you believe that disease just kind of randomly lands on you, you don't know where it comes from, then you might not care about your diet or your lifestyle, you know, whether you sleep or you exercise. You, you just, you don't even take responsibility. Instead of understanding, no, like disease is very intertwined in the entire being. And of course, there was no sickness and disease in the garden. Diseases is a result of the fall into sin, which leads me to the second. What do you believe about the devil? You know, almost 40 years ago, I knew very little about the devil. I thought he was this guy with the, you know, uh, pitchfork. I had no idea that devil is the author of sickness and disease. 
See, that's very important when you go to actually acting on receiving healing from God. If you think God is the author of your disease, that God has given you the cancer, or is God, God has given you the MS, or God has given you the back pain, trust me, your faith won't get very far. But when you understand it's the devil, and it's a defeated devil <laughs> by the blood of Jesus and his powerful resurrection, then you're like, oh... Next week, Putty's going to actually dive into the theology of all of this. But then what do you believe about doctors? You know, you can put too much trust in what the doctors say and what the doctors do. I want you to know Jesus is the best doctor. And that brings us to divine intervention. You know, we live in a very scientific, rationalistic, often for many of us, a closed universe. We don't have a paradigm that God intervenes. And so that's a, that's a paradigm shift for us. So all of these make a big difference. What you believe about these and how they interplay it can be very complex. The bottom line is we want you to make a decision as we come through this series to know Jesus does heal today. Now, I think it's interesting that there's a, a very powerful text in the Bible, and this text is written by a medical doctor. And it, it encompasses all of these factors. Uh, Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he also wrote the book of Acts, he uh, wrote a text in Acts 10, 38. I'm going to look at that and show how he addresses all four of these factors. So this is Acts 10, 38, and it says this. Luke writes, Dr. Luke writes, and you know, see, it's really important, and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by God. No, oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And so you see all of these factors. Dr. Luke, who was a practicing physician, he's honoring the medical profession. But he says, wait, do you know something? There's like divine power that flowed through Jesus because he operated as a man, although he was fully God. Divine power that flowed through him. And he went around, and actually about 80-90% of his ministry was doing this, doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the author of sickness and disease, the devil. So that's very powerful illustration of how all of these are interwoven. Well, I thought it would be interesting to, because it gets complex, like how is this lived out in real life? And let me tell you, for every person, it is different. But the bottom line I hope to inspire today is just fresh hope and faith that Jesus is the best doctor. And to know how to hold on to him in the middle, you know, of waiting for healing and getting bad reports or, you know, knowing how to juggle everything. Because I want us to see that you can trust him. His love never fails. Well, I want to share a story, a real life story of a family, uh, Mark and Yvonne Pattison from Florida. And I happened to be in Florida last week with my grandkids. So I got to interview them. And they are the daughter and son-in-law of Floyd and Sarah Yoder of the Sullivan campus. So while I was down there visiting, Yvonne and Mark shared with me the story of healing and well, as Yvonne said it, this, these were her words. Jesus' report trumped any medical report when it came to the issue, a very difficult issue, with their son. So in 2012, Yvonne was 40 years old. She'd had a miscarriage but learned she was pregnant with a much-wanted son. They had two older daughters. And so they were delighted, knew this was a gift from God. And pregnancy's fine. She goes in to have the baby. He's transverse, so it means he's the wrong direction. And they have to do a C-section, but, you know, that's a pretty common surgery. However, he was Joshua Michael Patterson was born uh, on January 10th, 2013, and immediately they knew something was wrong. He wasn't breathing. He was blue. They whisked him away to the NICU. They had no idea what was going on. But then ensued basically a year-long nightmare of all kinds of confusion and desperation and despair. The doctors could not figure out what was wrong. He screamed constantly, 
could not be put down, only could be held uh, on the chest, facing outward, not inward, could not eat, would not breastfeed, had to be fed with a syringe, vomited regularly, and wouldn't sleep. Now, that will throw a household into chaos. <laughs> you know, it's hard enough to have an infant. And, and uh, there's Josh, they're all hooked up to uh, the tubes. And so, wow, they had to make a decision. They are committed Christians. And they said from the beginning, they said, the devil will not win. See, they weren't just going to roll over. And, and this is very difficult. The, the doctors had no solutions. They did the test. They tried different things. It, nothing was working. And, you know, at that time, again, you, you have to make a decision. Am I just going to go, oh, well, I, you know, I guess God, you know, wants to take our child. Or I've, I mean, I've heard all of that blasphemous stuff spoken before. And yet, no, in spite of the all the diagnosis, failure to thrive, no weight gain. Well, they chose to trust Jesus as the best doctor, among other doctors, but as the best doctor. Well, lo and behold, a friend calls one day and says, I need to tell you something. Now, often, divine help comes through another person, just another human being. She said, I had a dream about your family while you were pregnant, but it was, you know, a little scary, so I didn't want to share it. But I think I'm supposed to tell you now. She said, in the dream, you were all on a cruise ship, you know, having a wonderful time. And then you looked over and into the ocean, and it was just rolling waves, tumultuous. And there, in a rubber raft floating away, was your baby, which is Josh. And it was very, very obvious that there was no rescue that could, could ensue. The, the, he was floating away. The ocean was, like, rolling. And, it, like, fear was present. And yet, in the dream, both Mark and Yvonne went, no, no, we will not. You know, we will not allow that to happen. We make a decision, he will be rescued. And in the dream, he was. Well, Mark told me that it was that dream that strengthened his faith in some of their darkest hours when it appeared there was no rescue. <laughs> He said, no, we just kept saying, Jesus, we trust you. And Yvonne told me, and I think this is really important for us to hear, she said, you know, I filled my mind daily with what Jesus says about healing. You know, because we get a lot of other bad reports, whether that's medical reports or TV reports or internet reports. She filled her mind with scriptures, with God's will about healing. And then she heard the Holy Spirit say, this is not a time for Sunday school prayers. You know, oh, God, help. If you want to, God's like, no. You declare, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. Josh will be healed. Meanwhile, they're still dealing with, you know, erratic sleep, got a little bit better, maybe two hours instead of 30 minutes, drinking, you know, a little bit of goat's milk, but still not gaining weight, not making progress. Well, Yvonne shared one night she was particularly discouraged. Yes, discouraged. And she sat there and she said, in the darkness of her bedroom, she said, Jesus, I know if you were here on earth, I know I could take any plane, I would overcome any obstacle to get to you and hand you Josh. And I know, I know you would heal him. And then the Holy Spirit dropped a thought in her mind about a book she'd recently read called Experiencing Heaven. And she heard this thought. Take Josh to heaven. She didn't really know what that meant, but she closed her eyes and she immediately saw Jesus standing right in front of her. She said, never happened before, never happened since. But she said, I, I, I can't even begin to describe the love that just emanated from Jesus. His eyes, his hands, as he took a hold of Josh and put him on his chest, she said, there are absolutely no words to describe this love. And she said, I could feel it, but there's no words. It's unlike any earthly love. And I said to her, yes, I, I have not personally had that type of encounter, but this I know. All throughout the Bible, when it speaks of God's unfailing love, his steadfast love, it is the Hebrew word hesed. And you know there is absolutely no translation in any language, known language around the world, that can capture this love. It's so divine. It's so powerful. 
And as she watched Jesus hold him, she knew, my son is healed. And indeed, Jesus handed Joshua back, and then he covered them like with a blanket of peace. And then she opened her eyes. She's like, whoa, wait a minute. That's right. Jesus' whole message was what? The kingdom of heaven has come. You see, Jesus is here. We don't have to hope that we can, uh, you know, hop on a plane and, and fly to Jesus. He is here. That's the whole message of the kingdom. God has come. And he's not only here, he's in us. And at times, he appears, yes, but the life of God is in us. And that is exactly what she experienced. Now, She'd had the sense it would be little by little uh, at this point. <laughs> she'll take anything. And it was 12 months when he went in for an exam at a children's hospital, and they did a sano again of his gastrointestinal area because he's still not eating and gaining weight. And they go, wait a minute. We see two large hernias. That must have happened because he was like traumatically delivered because of his position. And the doctor said, well, you know, we can do a pretty routine surgery, even though he's only, you know, a year old. And they did. Immediately, he began eating, stopped screaming, pain was gone. Here he is today, four years old, eating pizza. Yeah, a very, very healthy (laughs) young man. (laughs) And uh, here's the rest of the family. That's Mark, Yvonne, and uh, Cassie, and Lindsay. And actually, for those of you who know Mike and Julie Yoder, Yvonne is Mike's sister. So uh, there's really a neat, neat connection there. And I just think their story so illustrates healing is complex. You know, it's not either or. It's not black and white. But there was one factor They would not let go of Jesus as the best doctor. Listening for him, calling out to him, doing what he told them to do, and refusing to let the devil, the author of sickness, the thief who wants to kill and destroy, refusing to let him have his way. And so very, very, very powerful story, I believe, illustrating um, exactly. We can decide. We can decide to trust Jesus first and foremost and have him show us how can we receive the healing Jesus that you have for us. Well, interestingly too, uh, Luke in the Bible, the doctor, he uh, makes it very clear Jesus is especially compassionate to parents who have sick children. And there's quite a few stories recorded. Jesus never ever refused to heal a child that was brought to him. And uh, one particular incident, and I'm going to look at this with you, is found in Luke chapter 8. And this is a story, and again, Luke is writing it. He's a medical doctor. Um, You know, he understands that at this point, um, there was no hope for this family. So it's a father. His name is Eiris. He's the synagogue ruler, which is interesting, which means, whoa, he's right there in the thick of all the Jews who were very angry with Jesus, wanting to crucify Jesus, not believing in Jesus. And yet, the synagogue ruler had a daughter, a 12-year-old daughter, his only daughter, who was dying. And probably because he was a ruler, a synagogue ruler, he was a somewhat wealthy man. And only the wealthy in those days could access medical help. So we can surmise he probably had access to all the medical help that was available. And he's desperate. So we're going to pick up on the story when he comes here in Luke 8 um, to Jesus. And this is Luke 8, 41. Then a man named Eriris, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. This is really important right here. You see, he made a decision to come to Jesus. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, well, if God wants to heal me, he can. Yeah, he can, but he probably won't. He delights in our coming to him. And here, Eiris came, fell at his feet, worshiping him, calling out to him, pleading with him. And it's not that we have to beg God. That's not the point. The point is we have to make a decision to come. And to come in faith, to come knowing, no, Jesus, I know, I know you can, I know you will. I'm coming. I need help. 
And that's exactly what this father did. Well, the story, <laughs> the plot thickens. <laughs> then a messenger arrived, and he told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. It's too late. I'm telling you, the devil makes sure we get bad reports. Now, this is a really bad report. She's dead. It's too late. There's no help. And we, again, we have a decision. How are we going to respond? Well, this is what Jesus says to him, and I think it's what Jesus would say to us. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Eriris, don't be afraid. Just have faith, and she will be healed. Oh, sure, don't be afraid. <laughs> you know, like, my kid has died. <laughs> and you say, well, yeah, I mean, Jesus was there with him. Jesus is here in us, and Jesus is with us. And he says the same thing. Make a choice. Don't be afraid. Trust me. She will be healed. He will be healed. So indeed, they go to the house. Well, they run into all kinds of weeping and wailing. Why? She's dead. That's what happens. And Jesus says, just stop that. She's not dead. She's just asleep. <laughs> and instead of weeping and wailing, the text tells us they begin to laugh. Whoa, that's a switch. Hey, trust me. When you start telling people Jesus is the best doctor, they're going to be like, hmm, that's okay. Sure. They don't support you. They think you're crazy. I mean, in American society, doctors are close to God. You know, as thankful as we are, and many of you are in the medical profession, and we're thankful for that, but the reality is, most people would not agree that Jesus is the best doctor. Well, Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child, get up. And at that moment, her life returned, and she immediately stood up. He wants to do this today. He's looking for people who will trust him. He's looking for people who will come to him as the best doctor. And maybe you've exhausted everything that man can do for you or medicine can do for you. And he says, don't be afraid. Just trust me and you will be healed. You know, Jesus really wants our children well. He does. He wants us well too. But he cares deeply, deeply about our children. He does. And... I've seen, again, I saw this over and over and over again in my own experience. I had to decide. Almost every time one of my children was ill, any kind of sickness, any kind of injury, I went first to Jesus. I trusted him first and foremost and listened for instructions. You know, what he might say, what he might have us to do. He is the best doctor. Well, I think it would be actually very helpful for us to hear it from some medical doctors. And so uh, here in our Vineyard family, we have doctors Jose and Betsy Davalis. They're a husband-wife team. They work in women's health, in obstetrics and gynecology, and they're part of the Urbana campus. And I'm going to share with you part of their story, and then they're going to finish up telling you uh, on a short video clip. But I first met them when they had been experiencing about a year of infertility, and they had one child and wanted another one. And through a series of power encounters, uh, Betsy got pregnant with their second son, and they were overjoyed. Again, they knew this was an answer to prayer, but immediately the devil began to attack her. Nightmares, complications. Now, again, she's pregnant. She is a doctor of women's health. Her husband's an obstetrician and gynecologist, so they understand Okay, and sometimes if you know too much, it can hurt your faith. You know that, right? So she would have these nightmares. One in particular, she was uh, gushing blood. And the next day when she woke up, she lived the nightmare. And any woman knows, any doctor knows, if you're bleeding during pregnancy, it's a very dangerous sign. And she said, no, I just went, devil, no. No, this has to stop. You cannot have this child. I command this blood to cease in Jesus' name. Ten minutes later, everything stopped. <laughs> Baby's fine. But it didn't stop there. There was just all kinds of attacks. But through it all, 
They made very, very, very clear decisions to keep trusting Jesus, keep trusting Jesus. Well, they get close to term. She goes in for a routine checkup, but they say, oh, your, your uh, levels are low, your, your fluid, which they promptly forgot to give her, and your blood pressure is off, and actually they'd, missed, they'd mixed up some lab reports. All that to say, they were demanding that she have a C-section immediately. She knew she was going to have a C-section, but in a vision, God had shown her the doctor that would perform that. Now, she'd actually never met this doctor, but she had just seen. God had said, this is the doctor. Well, she said to the attending physicians, no, we're, we're not going ahead with this. They're like, pretty much, you're crazy. But thankfully, again, they're medical doctors too, so they're like, no, we know what we're doing. And she said, we just put on our worship music, and we begin to worship, and we begin to enact in, in, in and enforce all that we've learned in the School of Kingdom Ministry. We just stood our ground, praising Jesus, telling the enemy to leave. She said, they kept pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. 24 hours later, in through the door, walks the very physician she'd seen in the dream, and she turns and says, now you can do the surgery, which they did. And she had a very healthy son, but the devil was not done. Let's hear them tell the rest of the story. Even after the C-section, the baby was fine, but the enemy did not give up. <laughs> and my wife um, supposed to go to the other room, to, to her room. She could not go to her room because she was bleeding. She was bleeding. And they asked to return her to the to surgery, to the OR. At that time, I said, no, my wife will not go to the OR anymore. We stood on Jesus for that one yes. again, severely. Severely. And that was very, um, very tough situation. Mm -hmm. A very tough situation and I, I said Jesus you never fail you never fail and they want my wife to go back to the surgery and that makes sense because she was bleeding but I believe in you God you can stop the bleeding because you did that before God remember and we prayed I remember I was calling also to ask for prayer and people um, and I, we prayed, and the bleeding stopped. I remember coming in and out of consciousness from surgery, post-op, and I remember hearing, we need to go back to surgery because she's bleeding. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, God, this is now considered big. This is a complication. And I can't even figure out where and why. Where is that coming from? There's no need. No, the uterus will contract, it will, the bleeding will stop, and you can stop it. And I had no worry. So going back to how I understand better now post-attending School of Kingdom Ministry, how Jesus, how he heals, it goes back to believing again. I just knew right away, once I heard the bad news, I refuted it, did not believe it. And I just said, Jesus, you held me through and I expect everything to be okay. I know everything will be fine. I do not require surgery for blood to stop. You can do it. And um, I'm healed. <laughs> Jesus still heals. Miracle is still happening. And I believe that. And I, I don't know what I can do to tell everybody um, the, the old concept that miracle stop happening is a lie, is a plan of the enemy. Jesus is a healer, not only when he was on earth, but today and forever. Jesus is a healer. Jesus was the healer, and Jesus will be always the healer. <clears throat> 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 
Well, doctors Jose and Betsy have a lot more to share, so that's why you won't want to miss small group, because they'll be our first uh, couple that's featured on our video. You'll be getting teaching and hear some more of their stories this week. And if you're at the Urbana campus, you can sign up for the mid-sized group out in the commons. I think Sullivan has several mid-sized groups, but ordinary small groups too will be doing this. So make sure, because we're going to spend six weeks hearing some amazing things and really learning Okay, Jesus, how do you heal today? How do I cooperate with that? How do I actually become convinced you are the best doctor? And I know that one of the things that has helped me over and over is to continually read what he says. And so I say, take action this week. Uh, two of my favorite chapters in the Bible on healing are from the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 8 and 9, very powerful. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you as you read. And then any sickness this week, you know, a headache, a bump, a flu trying to come on, I want to just challenge you, go to Dr. Jesus first. I believe he's going to show you he really is the best doctor. So thanks, Father. Thank you. We, we want to be taught. We have many people desperate. If not here, Lord, all around the people we love, our neighbors, our family, even strangers who need healing. So thank you for trusting us and continue to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to the message today. To experience more powerful messages, go to vineyardlive.us or join our Vineyard Live Plus community to view conferences, trainings, and special teachings.